Do you ever wonder how cyber attacks happen? Of course, there's learning how to hack and there's plenty of resources online where you can learn to do just that. But that's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the timeline. That is to say, when an attack is happening, when are certain attacks performed, and in what order? How exactly does the cyber attack play out? Well, like all things in tech, there is a framework that we can actually look at to digest exactly this question. And it's actually based off of previous cyber attacks to give us an approximation of what future cyber attacks will likely look like. And this gives us not only a direction to work in whenever we're building out defense in depth, but also to really understand in our own minds as professionals or as students, or even just as people that are into cybersecurity stuff to really understand how exactly attacks play out. So whenever you read a headline on the cyber attack happening, you know generally what happened without having to read the headline. It also helps us to hit that like button. That helps push this video and this channel to new audiences, which spreads the good word of cybersecurity and who can't get behind that. Now let's talk about what we're talking about today and that is the Cyber Kill Chain. And that is a cool name, but what is it? The Cyber Kill Chain was a tool developed by Lockheed Martin based off of the Kill Chain. And the Kill Chain is basically a concept devised by the US Department of Defense. It basically theorizes the segments of an attack. The Kill Chain can actually be abbreviated with the acronym F2T2EA, which again is an acronym for Find, Fix, Track, target, engage, and assess. Now being that Lockheed Martin is a contractor that works in the defense and aerospace industry, there's a lot of cross-pollination between the DOD and Lockheed. So of course, they created a similar framework, but for cyberspace. And that led to the creation within Lockheed of the cyber kill chain. And that is now something that is used beyond just Lockheed Martin, but amongst other cyber professionals as well. This chain is comprised of seven pieces. Reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, Installation, command and controller C2, and then actions on objective. Now let's dive into every single phase. And once we're done diving into every single phase, I'm gonna make some caveats onto the cyber kill chain that you should be aware of as well. But anyway, let's dive into reconnaissance. This is where attackers will set their sights on the target and begin looking for ways in. And this can be done in two different ways, using passive reconnaissance or active reconnaissance. Passive reconnaissance is whenever the attacker does not interact with the target, or in other words, whenever the attacker uses open source intelligence means they use public information. They do not visit the target's website. They do not do scans of the target infrastructure. They are not interacting in any way, shape, or form with the target or any of its infrastructure. Instead, they're relying on public information from third parties. This can include social media. It can include Wikipedia. It can include Google. It can include a DNS registry. And that can give them a lot of information about the people that work there, and that can help them create phishing emails. It can give them an idea on the domains that they organization owns, the different IP addresses that are publicly registered, and that of course leads them to active reconnaissance. And that is whenever the attacker actually does interact with the target. That can be whether they are snooping around on the target's website, they could be performing scanning of the target infrastructure. Now the difference being that they may get more detailed information with active reconnaissance, but they are also of course interacting with the target. So this is where the target is able to start collecting logs on the attacker. Active reconnaissance is really where the attacker has to start enacting more stealthy techniques in order to not get caught. Once they have collected a sufficient amount of information, they move to the next phase, weaponization. At this point, the attacker has managed to collect a ton of data on the target. This will include information from both passive and active reconnaissance that will allow them to either craft specific spear phishing campaigns, find different exploits that work for different versions that they've caught the target using, maybe they're coding malware on their own. Basically, they are crafting their plan of attack in this phase phase that they will later use. After a good deal of time is spent in this phase, they now move on to the next phase, delivery. Now here, the next few phases actually happen in fairly quick succession whenever they're launching an exploit. However, in some cases, like say social engineering, these phases can play out a little bit longer, but we're gonna talk about that here in just a moment. But delivery is the point where they are actually delivering the exploit that they have crafted to the target. This may be them sending a phishing email, they are delivering the email to the target if they are shooting an exploit, then they are hitting exploit and firing the exploit off to the target. And of course, upon 
successful delivery, we move to the next phase, exploitation. If the phishing email was good, the target user will click on it. Or if they're launching an exploit upon successful delivery, the exploit successfully runs. Pending either scenario, that moves us to the next phase, installation. As soon as the exploit has completed successfully and it is able to install malware, well, that happens in this phase, installation. And that can be whether it is installing directly after an exploit is running or it is installing after a user has clicked a phishing link, which takes us to the next segment, command and control or C2. This is where the attacker is finally able to access the remote host on the target network and interact with it by passing commands remotely. Once they are able to do so, they can interact with the remote host. That takes us to the next and final phase of the Lockheed Cyber Kill Chain, actions on objective. And here is where the whole kill chain might just repeat again. So if we think about uh, the attacker attacking a target network, they may have completed this entire kill chain to get access to just one host that really gives them a foothold where they can then repeat this entire kill chain performing reconnaissance internally on the network, going through the weaponization phase where they're collecting public exploits for internal vulnerabilities they've identified and really just working through the whole thing again until they have gained enough access that they can do whatever they want. But maybe they don't want full access to the network. Maybe the actions on objective will be the uploading of more malware or ransomware or selling this access on the dark web. Now, I've mentioned earlier that each of these phases can happen very quickly or they can happen a lot longer. Again, in the cases where this is being launched from the CLI and this is an exploit being fired off, this could take really just a couple of seconds. But if this is a social engineering attack, then the attacker may have to walk the target individually through every single step. And so it might actually take a little bit longer. But in either case, you can probably map certain adversary actions to individual elements of the Lockheed Cyber Kill Chain. And like I said earlier as well, they can repeat and iterate through this entire process until they have completed their objectives. Now for defense, it's important to understand this framework and identify where you can disrupt or deny the adversary's ability to execute these different phases. For instance, if you have to initiate better OPSEC to make it more difficult for the adversary to perform reconnaissance, that's certainly something you can do. You can deny the effectiveness or efficiency of certain exploits, making the weaponization phase a lot harder because they're have to find more specific and better fitting exploits. You can deny the delivery of those exploits to hosts that you don't know or recognize and that can make it very difficult for the attacker to fire off exploits unless they have a host under their control that you have already trusted. Then with exploitation it's the detonation of that malware. You can detect it or you can deny new executions of programs. You can deny installations on certain hosts and then of course command and control is where you start to see some network traffic to unrecognized hosts. A lot of this requires a lot of monitoring and detection and really active defense. But again, if you're able to do that, then you can really take this Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain framework to the next level. And that is really where that defense in depth starts to become more real and pronounced. Now, there is a lot of information that we just covered here, and yet we still have another cool concept called the pyramid of pain. And yes, it is painful. So watch that right here, because that's something that you can utilize again to really get more out of what you are collecting in your monitoring and to really perform better as a defender. So check that video out and again hit that like button because that helps out this channel and drop a comment either on what your thoughts are on the cyber kill chain or what your least favorite food is. With all that I will see you all next time. Bye.